Okay, we were just now underway. So good morning, everyone. Uh, here, let me see if I can enable my video there. There we go. So good morning, everyone. I'm Adam Renfro. I'm a member of the NCVPS Outreach and Support Team. And welcome to our NCVPS in real time info session. So in real time or IRT is a program that brings live instruction from NCVPS instructors to students in your facilitated classroom. Uh, we piloted the eighth grade classes in the program last year, and we had tremendous success with that. So this year we're expanding the program to include our seventh grade classes. And we have with us today, uh, this is our team for today. We have with us our executive director, Dr. Mia Murphy, uh, Dr. Rachel McBroom. She's not with us this morning, but she's overseeing the program from its start. Uh, we have uh, Megan McGrath, who's one of our instructional directors. Uh, and Megan's also the architect of the IRT program. Uh, and then also Dr. LaShondon Perkins, uh, also from the outreach team. Uh, and she's the manager of the IRT program. So let me turn things over now to Dr. Murphy. Dr. Murphy, all yours. Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your very, very busy schedule. If we can go back one slide. Um, to join us today and learn more about our IRT program. One of the things that we always like to do because we never are sure, uh, back a couple of slides, um, um, we're never sure um, what you know your um, knowledge of or experience with NCVPS may be. So this is kind of our overview slide that talks about who we are and hopefully what qualifies us in this um, virtual space to really work closely um, with your school needs. So actually starting this summer, 2024, we are in our 17th year. So have been doing this a long time and very blessed that I had Adam the entire time with NCVPS. We are supplemental. Um, NCVPS is not diploma granting. We cannot exist without you, without partnering with a school um, or district entity to provide educational opportunities for your students. And we work with every type of student. So you can see majority of our enrollments are public school, but many are, um, we're growing within our home and private school. Majority are public school, um, traditional public and charter. Um, you can see since um, 2007, our enrollments until the present with 22-23, we actually haven't included in that over 700,000 um, our enrollments for 23-24. Um, um, Annually, we enrolled about 55,000 enrollments. And so that is uniquely about 30 to 32,000 students. Many of our students take multiple courses. Uh, we usually serve about 1,000 schools per year. Of course, quality is very, very important, but we don't want to say that we're great. We want to make sure that we have a an, an external evaluator. So if you're not familiar, Quality Matters is pretty much the gold standard in online course quality. And as it stands now for the last three or four years, NCVPS has had the most Quality Matters certified courses of any K-12 program in the nation. So we currently have 88 courses that are certified. So that means that th these meet the national standards for what, um, of what is quality in teaching and learning. Our teaching force is vast. Um, we have a very deep bench. As you can see, we have about 700 highly qualified teachers who are ready to meet your students where they are. And you can see how many um, districts and charters and non-public we enroll. We enrolled every single school district to an extent and that extent is decided by you, many charters and many non-public entities. So I just wanted to give an overview of who we are to, because I'm, I never know um, who and to what extent you've utilized us. So let's get into talking about IRT. And as um, Adam mentioned, Dr. Rachel McFume is not here today. Um, she had a family emergency, so normally she would he be here to kind of give you an overview, but I am going to substitute in her place. So let's um, talk about IRT in our pilot year. So we- and, and Dr. Murphy, sorry to interrupt, but we dropped a Padlet link in the chat. Okay. Uh, if you have any questions that you want uh, to preserve and for us to respond to later, you can add any comments you like. Uh, to that Padlet, and you can find that in the chat. 
So IRT, actually, this is actually our, we've concluded our pilot year. Um, we spent a year trying to plan this and figure out what programming worked best. And as you can see, uh, we had four courses. So all of eighth grade four, we worked with four districts and schools. We had six teachers um, in IRT and we served 192 students. So all middle school students. So we worked collaboratively um, with um, four of our districts and they were very throughout the state. So we had East and West. So, uh, you know, very diverse needs um, with our schools for our pilot year. As we move on, let's kind of talk about um, what IRT and synchronous means for NCVPS as we're developing the program. So, um, a partnering um, school is going to have five predefined 75-minute um, um, sessions. So we're going to talk about that. But there are going to be three synchronous live sessions per week. This is also accompanied with what you are already experiencing with NCVPS, the asynchronous course. So we pair the live teaching with the asynchronous course um, to really make sure that students are able to engage fully with the learning. Below you will see um, some of the entities that we think may benefit, but really it is school decision choice, what you know about your needs. But definitely if students are new to online learning um, and you want to make sure that they have a different level of support, um, if live instruction and if they're not quite ready for completely asynchronous, if you are dealing with um, vacancies and long-term, um, possibly um, over a course of several years. Um, and if you also, and we've learned this this year, a district used us because they, they had a teacher, but that teacher needed a little bit more support and coaching. Um, so it's been used in that way also. So um, how it, you want to utilize the program, we can really work to tailor it for your needs. And we can move on. So let's look at our time blocks. Okay, so we are, this is actually new for um, 24, 25. Um, our pilot year, we pretty much try to work with the district to figure out your scheduling needs and work to meet staffing there. But as you can imagine, that's really not scalable. So what we're um, working um, to have going forward is five 75 minute blocks. And based on your scheduling needs, you would schedule within those blocks when you would want to have the live instruction. And you can see in the lower left, some examples of those time blocks. So there are five blocks throughout the day um, and it's district decision. If you wanna start at you know 8.30 and move beyond there for your 45 minutes um, for it. But this um, definitely helps us with sustainability and capacity by actually implementing a schedule. So, but this is too um, with the 24-25 academic year. Um, we can move to the next. And so this is um, pretty much just talking about our pilot offerings. Remember last year, um, we had um, um, just eighth grade. So all the eighth grade core. So we're piloting um, this year, um, seventh grade core. So all of the um, core courses in seventh grade um, this year. And we can move on. But here you see what we're offering that we are calling catalog. It's a little bit different how our pilot will work versus those who are just in our catalog. So you can see it's all of um, eighth grade core, which we um, piloted 23, 24. And we're adding um, math one. So it's, there is math one um, for your high school students or math one for your middle school students. So as you, so IRT will be seventh grade core, eighth grade core, and math one for middle or high school, depending on the, um, the school's needs. So I'll pause. I'm gonna see if there were any questions in the chat. Um, for us to join, what's the answer? I don't see any, okay? So we'll move on and we'll transition to Megan McGrath, our instruction director. And as Adam said, she was the architect and designer of our program. All right, um, so the program content for IRT um, is, is pretty basic. Um, there are three 45 minute live synchronous sessions per week. 
Um, two of those live sessions are full instructional blocks. Um, so it is your full 45 minute instructional block. One of the live sessions um, is typically determined by the school um, and the NCVPS teacher. And it's kind of set up as a what I need uh, remediation or enrichment group. Um, at some of the schools this year, we saw them do whole groups. Um, typically this day was on Friday. Um, some schools prefer to do whole groups on Friday um, and do remediation and enrichment games and activities. Some schools preferred uh, to pull small groups. So the NCVPS teacher might take the remediation group when the face-to-face -face facilitator might take the enrichment group and kind of split them up for more tailored and personalized um, time during Fridays. Um, all sessions start with an SEL opening activity. Uh, the SEL activities that we designed are on the DPI approved uh, CASEL uh, format for SEL activities. Um, so those are all built in as community builders um, at the beginning of class. In addition to that synchronous live content, you also have the asynchronous content. Um, so the asynchronous content are our NCVPS modules um, that Dr. Murphy spoke about um, with the QM certification. We did really tailor these modules to the middle school student. Um, so you will see a lot more interactive content. Um, you will see it much more as a student-friendly uh, format um, for our middle school students. Um, and then again, the assessments aligned to objectives. The teachers are providing immediate feedback um, for each assignment. I think that's one of the huge values um, in NCVPS is the students are getting very specific feedback for each assignment that they do. Um, and so I think that, that that's a huge value. Um, and then in addition to that, we have synchronous support sessions, which are office hours. So you have your synchronous lessons for the whole group during the week. You have your asynchronous content that they'll be working on in modules. And then the teacher also has office hours, which are basically those tutoring hours that are set up at the discretion of the school. Um, so there's two hours a week. Uh, the school would schedule that with their NCVPS teacher. We had some schools that preferred to do those during the school day. We had some schools that preferred to open those up in the evening um, so that their students had access to the NCBPS teachers in the evening to ask questions about their work or assignments. All right. So a tentative schedule. Now, this is all um, going to be personalized between the school and the NCBPS teacher. But a sample one would be the synchronous lessons are on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, so they would do a synchronous lesson for 45 minutes. And then depending on your instructional block, they would have that synchronous live time. And then they would work a small amount on the asynchronous modules. On Tuesday and Thursday, they would flip it um, and they would be doing the asynchronous modules and then they would have those office hours or tutoring support hours. Um, so we found that this was a really effective schedule last year. Um, we had many schools that flipped this to Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, um, or, you know, if there were certain things going on at their school, um, you know, we were really able to play with those days throughout the year. Um, but again, this is just a, a sample schedule of what it could be with those three synchronous sessions and then the other times for the asynchronous work. So as far as the lesson format, this is going to be very similar to any sort of mini lesson um, and, and follow-up lesson that you would see in a regular classroom. Um, we start off with a daily agenda for the synchronous and asynchronous work because we really want to make sure that our students are organized and prepared and really understand how those two parts match. That continues, as I said, with the SEL activity um, that follows the CASEL framework. Um, then we do an opening activity that has spiral we review, quick checks, pre-learning activity, anything to get those kids engaged with a hook and ready to go. Um, the body of the lesson, we're really focused on active engaged learning. Um, depending on the concept, it could include mini lessons, learning games, uh, flipped classroom activity. And we've really used tools, um, online tools that allow for a lot of student discourse, partner and group work. So you're gonna see frequently that they're in breakout rooms or that they're asked to move in the classroom um, to work together in teams. Um, so again, really taking those best practices in the classroom and applying them in an online setting. At the conclusion of the lesson, again, we go over that agenda again because we found that that was the most important part is making sure kids understood how they take that synchronous content and then apply it to their asynchronous modules. 
um, also including an exit ticket. And the exit ticket is kind of two parts for them. Uh, the one part is academic focus uh, so that we see how they're doing academically. And the other is really a check on, you know, how did they like that lesson? What adjustments can we make to that lesson? Um, and then obviously a parking lot for any questions or concerns. So the roles and responsibilities, we've broken these up into what the NCVPS teacher will do and then what your facilitator in the classroom will do. So the NCVPS teacher um, is, is the teacher of record. They're providing the instructional support. They're providing the resources. Um, they're providing a weekly parent newsletter. They're making contact with parents. Um, they're updating families on, on grades and on progress in the class. Um, so they are taking on all those roles of the traditional classroom teacher. Um, they're providing all grading and feedback for assignments. Um, and they're providing biweekly progress reports um, in the NCVPS system. And so you would take those progress reports and then um, input them into PowerSchool. And so that's the roles of the NCVPS teacher. On the other side of that, we have the face-to-face -face facilitator. Now, the face-to-face -face facilitator really depends on the school. Um, so in some cases, uh, you know, this is because of a teacher vacancy issue. Uh, so you would have a sub in the class or maybe multiple subs that are rotating through. Uh, it might be a lab facilitator. Um, or we did work with one district this year uh, that opted to do this for beginning teacher support that they thought was really effective. Um, so new teacher um, or new teachers uh, that, that needed that additional support where our teacher took on all of those uh, curriculum and content responsibility so that the new teacher could really focus on classroom management and on all of those kind of BT uh, focus areas. So the face-to-face -face teacher, whether it's a beginning teacher, whether it's a sub, whether it's a facilitator, they're going to provide the daily supervision and tech support in the classroom. They're going to check Canvas weekly to monitor student progress. They're going to be collaborating with the NCVPS teacher daily. Um, and so there is a lesson plan uh, document that they work on daily so that the sub or facilitator or BT, they understand exactly what's coming. They can make any modifications if there's something going on in the schedule or if they just think there's a different need with the students. Um, and so they're collaborating daily with that. Um, they also have a touch point weekly by phone um, so that they're kind of layering those, those points of collaboration so that everybody's on the same page. And we also ask that the substitute or facilitator or beginning teacher have another staff member on campus. And this could be an AP, an instructional coach, a mentor. Um, and that just serves as a secondary point of contact. Um, we found that that was really important um, because not only can this person do a quick scan of the grades and progress, um, but again, due to the nature of these positions, especially vacancies, you might have multiple subs going through that room throughout the school year. So you really want that secondary person um, to understand the program, understand a little bit about how the progress works in the program. Um, so we do ask schools to identify a secondary contact person. So okay. I am going to pause. Yeah, and Megan, we have a couple of questions in the yeah. chat. That, sure. uh, probably Let, the best thing. Although I see Dr. Murphy has responded as well. Yeah, let me get, oh, it looks like Dr. Murphy has gone in and responded. Are there any that she didn't get to? Oh, I was just typing, and this was great for you to answer, uh, Megan, okay. um, about um, what do we have in place for students who may need additional help? Yep. So as far as the additional help, um, again, we have those office hours set up with the NCVPS teacher. Um, however, we also have our peer tutoring center um, at NCVPS that actually, it, we're saying peer tutoring center, but actually um, it's staffed with some of our NCVPS teachers for our middle school students. Um, so we have a couple different layers um, that they can have um, for extra assistance, depending on the student. Um, because we know some students, um, they're going to do better in a small group tutoring session with their regular NCVPS teacher. Um, we know that other students might do better with a one-on-one -on -one, uh, with a, a separate tutor. Um, so we do have those layers of intervention in place um, when students are struggling. Okay, thanks for that, Megan. And we are moving in our into our training and support uh, section. And that brings you up, Dr. Perkins. 
Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> so we, there will be a time for those who um, decide to move further in the with the program. There will be a time that um, NCVPS will set up dates for training and support um, for professional development for your school staff. Um, so you, there will be an invitation that will be sent out to those particular schools. And some of the things that will be included in this particular professional development will be a review of the course facilitation guide, as well as how to utilize the synchronous portion of Zoom, as well as the Canvas asynchronous portion of Zoom. Also, the review of the daily planning document, how the lesson um, format content will go, um, communication guides, as well as some instructional best practices while being in the hybrid um, virtual model mode. We do understand that this will be new for some individuals. And so, and there will be additional things that will be covered um, for that particular professional development for school staff. You can move on, Adam. Um, so we're asking for the requirements for technology because that's one of the big things that are asked. So these are some of the things that we do require or that we do request that districts have devices and networks that are needed to be able to access um, Zoom. Students will not be able to create the, or utilize their own personal Zooms um, within this IRT program. Also, we ask that you will have or provide any type of appropriate audio, visual um, accessories, earbuds, headphones, um, any additional things that could be utilized to support the live instruction for your students. Um, for the ta tablets are conducive, excuse me, tablets and smartphones are not conducive. However, you are, districts are allowed to use Chromebooks. And in the professional development, there will be other additional resources and other things that will be shared or identified. Now we get to the funding part. As Dr. Murphy mentioned earlier on with this presentation, this is a pilot year for our seventh grade. So all of those core, co uh, core courses will be offered at no cost during this pilot year. For the eighth grade courses, including the North Carolina uh, Math One Middle School and High School, those um, those enrollments will be paid through the regular projection instructional projections of the districts or the schools. If there is any additional seats or additional yeah seats that need to be uh, or that are required. The same thing you would do um, if you're familiar as the traditional model is we have a form that you request um, additional allotments through our request for reserve, reserve enrollments, and there is a form for that. Additionally, PSUs, you can utilize flexible funding. There is a flexible, use your, utilize your flexible funding method um, to um, obtain or access those eighth grade course core courses and the math one middle and high school. There will be um, during this uh, process or program ongoing support. So for the parents, we do have um, already scheduled dates for the parent orientation. Um, so we work very well with the schools because we want to make sure also that the parents are informed so they that, that they are able to assist their students. Um, in this particular program. We have communications as far as the newsletters and teacher communication. We're big, we're very big on communication and collaboration with our stakeholders. Um, as mentioned before, for the schools, we do have um, IRT, the program training, we do have that. There's also um, our instructional team. They'll do a quarterly, we call quarterly post checks. And as well, um, we have, if you don't know, our outreach and support department, we're available Monday through Friday live, every Monday through Friday from 12 to 12.30. And so schools and parents can join, um, join us at that particular time live um, where they can come in and ask questions. For students, we have student success guides of how they can be successful through the program. We also have a training module of how the student, it provides a lot of different tools 
for, we call it our getting started unit for the students to be successful. It, it does talk about our peer tutoring um, center and additional strategies and tools to help our students. And also we have um, time management organizational tips for our middle school students. So we have plenty of ongoing support um, out as well for to help our parents, our schools, and our students because we want um, our students to be successful in this or well, any program that we have. And so we do have a plethora of support for our um, stakeholders. So for next steps, so say, and I see there's a, a quite a few comments, um, a quite a few um, questions in the in the chat. Say for so for next steps, what would happen is after this that you are interested in, um, and some individuals are actually up here that have already met with some of our team that for the interest meeting. But the next step, if you wanted to to proceed with, is is we have an application process. So you will communicate or confer. Or if you're the individual who makes a decision, you will submit an application. That application comes straight to me. We will set up a one-on-one -on -one appointment to make sure that everything that you had detailed um, on that particular application, as far as your classroom, your, your, your classroom needs, we'll get the numbers of enrollment that you need and some other things before it goes to our instructional department. Um, so that will be the, the next particular process. I see one of the questions that's in there, and I can go ahead and answer that um, as well. Um, right now, what we're doing, we want, we're we are already marketing and putting the, the information out about RRT because we want to go ahead and begin the process with the schools who are interested. We don't have a quote unquote um, definite deadline However, what we are saying is this, capacity matters. I can tell you right now that some of the schools that I have already met with, some of them are requesting this, some of the same courses. And so we are actually hiring as well on the other side, um, hiring teachers. However, we do know that capacity um, um, is important for us to know or get the applications in as soon as possible, as, as soon as you know, because opacity can be an issue and we want to go ahead and get everything in order. So we're saying right now, you know, some schools, they do know the vacancies that they will have or upcoming, they're skeptical, they know what they want to do. As soon as you know, because there is a it, there is a process that we, we have to carry this, the schools through and we want to make sure that capacity is fulfilled. We want to make sure the planning on our end so that we can meet the needs of our school districts and our schools. So if there's so after the application is submitted, it like I said, it will come to me. We will have we will meet, have a one on one meeting um, and then I will. Um, send the application in different to our instruction department so we can finish up the process, get you, get your students, get your classes batched out or your courses batched out and a whole lot of a few other things. Also, if you have not visited our website, there is a video on our website plus um, the most frequently asked questions that are up. So we have some FAQs as well that are, that are up on the website. And thank you, Amber, for dropping that um, in the chat. I think there's some more questions. Okay, thank you for that, Dr. Perkins. And I think, yeah, we've reached the question and answer uh, portion. Let me enable um, everyone's microphone. Uh, you can continue with your questions in the chat or you can enable your microphone and chat with us. I, I want to, I think uh, I think it was Lindsay's question asking about costs. And so, yes, there is no difference in the um, cost of IRT versus our traditional, um, primarily asynchronous courses. Um, the course cost is based on the semester type. Um, obviously, with these primarily being middle school courses, um, they would be year long. So it will be that year long cor um, course cost. But um, there is not um, a difference in cost between um, whether it 
um, is asynchronous or has synchronous components. Um, and just to underscore what Dr. Um, Perkins said about um, timeline, we fully understand that it is, you know, the 1st of June. And um, while you are working to make sure that you fill vacancies, um, you don't know. And possibly you may not know even that first week. Uh, we will work um, with you the best that we can based off capacity. Uh, we're, you know, working on our teacher um, pool right now to um, make sure um, that we are lined up. Obviously, the sooner that we know, the better, but we also understand that you are facing many, many, many um, complicated things um, with scheduling and making sure that you're hiring. And so please don't think that, oh, well, it's after the 10th day or it is too late. Always, always reach out to us and ask your questions. Um, your questions make us better. Um, and we're here to make sure that um, we work really hard to accommodate your needs. And yes, we'll share the recording with uh, everyone that attended or, or even just registered to attend. I, um, I think um, Lisa did, did um, Dr. Murphy answer your question? Um, she has Dr. Murphy, how does this work if we don't start until after Labor Day? Yeah, and I, I just posted a uh, response to that. I see. Just arrange, yeah, just arrange that with our, our teacher and it's not a problem. And do we have any other questions out there? I think we caught all the ones in the chat. We did. I did want to underscore um, one thing. I think there were, you know, some questions about growth and test scores and so forth. And so obviously this is our pilot year. And, um, you know, you, of course, administer the test to your students. So we actually don't get those scores until they're presented to the state board. Accountability does whatever cleanup that needs to be done. And so actually really October. Um, and so, and we have to request it um, from our accountability department because they're your scores. But to know that for the last eight or nine years in CVPS for our um, high school um, courses, we have met or um, surpassed state averages um, for those. Um, and so the, the modality works, the instruction works. Um, and so did want to make sure that that was known. Uh, we just don't have any data right now um, because of course, many schools are in the midst of testing. We would, and we would not have those scores until um, September, October. Okay, well, I believe that's it. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.